bathroom. <laughs> Every now and then when I go out of town and I forget that I'm not in the city anymore and, and I'm like, wait, your bathroom doesn't have a f- <laughs> can Fort Knox level security <laughs> yeah, exactly. type five. And then what's up with locking the spoons? A cipher lock they, mechanism. They, they're putting like 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 a, <laughs> like a ladle. <laughs> on, Brick. I, I, yeah. When I when I moved into my apartment, I was gonna make it a point to <laughs> to only have a cooking ware that I'd stolen from public restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like making eggs with like a like a, like a little ladle like and a spatula. Like I got spike, this in the, the gas spike station. ladle. It's got like <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for their bathroom key to just be chained to another person. <laughs> 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 hey, bro! Don't your forget fir- to take me back. <laughs> He's just standing at the counter. That's your first day as an employee at Starbucks. That's your training. That's your, training. Yeah. We should, we that's, we that's your rookie hazing. Yeah, is being bathroom key guy. <laughs> bathroom key guy. <laughs> what did you do last night? Oh, I was working from two yeah. to two to eleven. <laughs> Doing what? I was bathroom key guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sucked, man. I saw a lot of meth. <laughs> hey. Hey, do, do you have to watch? Hey, I'm a professional. <laughs> hey, I'm hey, I'm like, get, I'm turn around. This, this is what I do. So I got to make sure you bring the key Look. back. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bring me back. You got to bring me back. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag me too. <laughs> <laughs> key too. <laughs> I identify as a key now. Uh, Not key Back, 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 Great from the south side. Mike, 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 Mike. Uh, I'm just so happy to be here right now. Real Rap Podcast. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back. Another episode of Real Rap Podcast, episode 38. This is probably going to be one of the few times that I actually get the episode right um, because I was just looking at the last one, and uh, I know that I'm on that number now. But regardless of that, uh, we have uh, got back to the debauchery. The last episode, um, I had like you know a straight A student on here that was also a professor, uh, but now. Now I have some dirty, filthy comics. So we're gonna uh, <laughs> straight uh, ass. We're gonna go. <laughs> we're gonna go real uh, deep back, about back the, the, the most <laughs> ridiculous dumb stuff. So uh, strap in. And by the way, uh, my two guests for the evening are Anthony Bonazzo um, and the fabulous Pratik, which I, I'm gonna need some assistance with that uh, last name. Shravastava. All right, fair enough. <laughs> and uh, gentlemen, if you could real quick uh, tell the fine people and the uh, viewing audience uh, your name, uh, how long you've been a city. Uh, how long you been in comedy? What you got going on? Anthony Bonazzo. How long? What, what the other question? What were the other prerequisites? How long you been in Chicago? How long I've been in Chicago since two thousand and six? Maybe two thousand. I know I pl- I moved here right when the Steelers were playing the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's how I remember. <laughs> that was how, a great the day uh, that I moved here. Doing stand up here probably since two thousand and ten. I started at Second City. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Just doing improv. <laughs> of course. Do you still look at the theater kids in Second City uh, the same? Um, there's two ways I look at it. I look at it the same way I look at it, like stand up com. Can you guys hear me right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way I feel like I look at like improvisers the same way I look at stand ups, right? So like I'll never forget the first week I was in Chicago. I was in like level A improv, oh, yeah. and every day at break in. Um, uh, at Second City, people go to like the Starbucks oh, to get something okay. to eat. By the way, I loved your description. Like they're popping up all over the map. You looked like it was like <laughs> it was like Hitler. It was do- world, world domination. He's, he's close. Like, it's like herpes. It's, just everywhere. it's like he's the game <laughs> Risk. He's populating <laughs> half of Eastern Europe. He's getting close. I'm voting for the president. who's going to keep these Starbucks out of our country. <laughs> Fucking French. <laughs> Make Duncan great again. Build that. Build that ceramic wall. <laughs> I want coffee, not this. Filthy milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Piper's Alley. So we go to the Starbucks. Yeah. And I remember we were all like, this group of students was waiting for their coffee. And I was waiting for my coffee. And there was these two, like, kind of pretentious looking. They just had, like, a pretentious look on their face. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> and me and my friend were, like, trying to just be, like, you know, you know, sociable. Mm. So, like, you guys in class, they're like, they both answered, like, two, like, crazy twins. They're like, yeah. Like uh, at the same time, it was a guy and a girl, and they were yeah. dating. And I was like, oh, what level are you guys in? And they looked at one another, and then they looked back at me, and they smirked, and then went. <laughs> and at the same time, they nodded their head, and they're like, conservatory. Uh, they're trying to flex. And, and I was like, oh, my uh, gosh. And then as you keep going. They're yes-ending life. Yes. <laughs> they're yes-ending their accomplishments. <laughs> <laughs> Zip zap. <laughs> It's so stupid, dude. It was like I was like, oh, I didn't even know what the conservatory was when I first mm. got there. 
And then as you go, you're like, oh, like it's kind of a big deal. And then you get it, and you're like, it's not that big a deal. Mm. And then you just keep going. You're like, oh, Torco is a big deal. And then you, you don't get Torco, or you get Torco. You're, you're always like, chasing something. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, I gotta get on. I gotta get on ETC. And then yeah. You yeah. Get on main stage. And then so by that point, I was already halfway through, and we were like, we we graduated the conservatory. I'm a graduate. No, and, yeah. um, um I'm a doctor of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> doctor of <laughs> doctorate of <a> comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a doctorate in yes ending. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, we ran our level whatever sketch shows every week on Monday, and then like afterwards, we were getting like paid gigs, and it was so mm. annoying to like try and get nine people on the same schedule. Oh yeah. Then yeah, I yeah. literally yeah. like saw that Zany's Old Town was having like like a Rising Star showcase, and I like sent in one email and I got it, and like I just started doing stand up in Chicago, mm. and like all these comics lost their minds, like that didn't know me, like how did you get that? I've been emailing them for 12 oh, years. Oh, and like yeah. they lost their minds. And those shows back then were like ridiculous. They would pack to the gills. It was like standing oh, yeah. room only. And it was a, such an awesome show. And that's how, you know, you just, I, so my point was, was like, I look at like those improvisers that were like conservatory. Yeah. Yeah. Versus like, you know, then you have like the corn servitory people that like just never really got better at improv. They're just always <laughs> mopping at every scene. You know, they're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> dildo. You know, they say whatever's funny. <laughs> yeah. but then if you go to like the main stage and like I would do this every once in a while, if I got off work early, I'd go to the main stage. They let you in for free at the end of the show to watch the improv sets. And it's some of the best improv you'll ever see. It's just like it's like you could go to an open mic and be like, oh, my God, this is comedy. And then you go to like a stand up show of like a good comic mm. and you're like, oh, that's actually stand up. It's not just. Oh, yeah. Holocaust and rape jokes. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't look at them with disdain because improv taught me so much about like how to navigate when you're in a set and it's weird and nothing's working to like be able to go into that moment of like improv, crowd work, whatever to get the show steered back on. Mm. So I think people who just make fun of it or like hate it are secretly like scared of it or they think of improv and they think of the corn servitory. Definitely did. Definitely did the second city. And it's I like how you're like a 70 year old <laughs> father. <laughs> you doing the second city? So you Tony? Do, you, do you <laughs> that do sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> for huh? <a> oh, <laughs> so, so you zip zap zap. You did the second you city? Huh? Over there. Huh? Or, or you had a plural. You, to it? you did the second cities? Oh, so so you, <laughs> you, had, you had the red ball. You, you handed people the red ball. Huh? <laughs> When you so hold you, the phone, are you, you holding the phone or are you making a phone symbol with your hands? Is Big that, difference. Is it yeah. this or this? Big are difference. Are you holding the gun like this or are you yeah. holding the gun or, like this? Because that's <laughs> there's only one way to hold a gun. You make a gun or you hold a gun. There's one or the other. Dude, that was so funny because one of our classes in the conservatory was, was one of these about? big name Second City actors. Yeah. Like, and he was like teaching us and just yelling at people. One girl oh, yeah. was like crying. Oh. And he goes, he goes, if you go into a scene, this is how you hold a fucking gun. And he did it this way. And I'm like, no. We're all like this. <laughs> this, all this. this is how you hold a gun. <laughs> <laughs> like how do you not know this? You can't school us, but don't even hold a hold a hold a gun. <laughs> I mean, you did drop that so heavy we, we ass. Im- word. We improv killed him after that. We were like, you- pow, pow, <laughs> ping, bang, pow. You too, Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> Time to put this old bird out of his misery. Partig, if you could, please. <laughs> um, so I I live in L.A. now, but I I grew up in Chicago. I started here with my comedy. Uh, I am a little bit different in that I started with straight open mics, mm. and then about three four years into stand up, I wanted to just excel better in stand up and learn more tools, yeah. gain more muscles in stand up and comedy performing. So I started doing uh, improv classes, but for the purpose of getting better at sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was always the end game with me was what can I do to get better at stand up? What can I do to get better at stand up? I like doing stand up. I like I like the idea of being in control of you know shows and all like you try to yeah. do with nine people like Benazzo was talking about you do, you try to set something up even just to film sketches with eight nine people you're dealing with schedules people are going to flake but personalities some, personalities but there's something about like hey I want to go on stage and try this joke and get like the immediacy reaction of whether yes. that works mm-hmm. that's always been the addicting part of stand up is the immediate feed, feedback yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I don't know why but when you said I, I live in LA right now it just bothered me <laughs> <laughs> It might just be the way you said it. It's probably I, the way I live in LA. Do. Right. It's kind of like conservatory. It's like I live in LA. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. Letting, I did smirk you know, a little bit. I did. I went. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm up here <laughs> and you are down here. Like it's like Edgewater, but with a little extra stank on it. Water. <laughs> Edgewater's a little cheaper than. <laughs> what is it's if, the North Hollywood of? Uh, of wherever you live in LA, what's the closest proximity of to a, a homeless person? <laughs> Uh, there's there's homeless people in front of the uh, the building I live in. 
<laughs> there's a little tent city. Like you go like two doors down, there's a tent city also. Mm. Like, LA, LA is. Mm. Don't worry, LA has their share of homeless people. It's I think bad. they're saying that it's like increasing out there. No, it's, it's getting it, bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just homeless in general. Like it's sure. Just, uh, we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something. You know. How how long have you been out there? Uh, I've been out there since 2021. No kidding. Yeah. I see you around the city uh, uh, often enough. Like you just uh, you, you have a family member. I have uh, family at, that's at clear. here, uh, and then also like I I would I would plan like tour routes, and I always fly into Chicago because mm. it's much cheaper to fly in somewhere to Chicago and then kind mm. of either travel out or drive out. So I always try to build back uh, a route here, uh, nice. and then I have family here too, so that that helps. You know? In my mind, Chicago is blue collar everything. You know, from the pizza to the comedy to the uh, yeah. work, to the passive work aggressiveness yeah. of traffic. <laughs> um, you know, everybody's out here, you know, grinding. And it generally feels like people are trying to be the funniest they can be on stage in order to pop go other places. Um, and I think that's similar to New York. But in my mind's eye, L.A. is like I'm trying to get on its pilot season. So I'm going to go up here and tell these ugh, jokes but I know some producer, some writer on Could strike, there, some da 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 da. Is mm-hmm. is that the vibe? Like, is oh, absolutely. what's the community difference between comics here in the LA? The community difference is the, 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 if there are good comics in LA, they're probably from somewhere else. They, <laughs> they didn't start there. It probably isn't the best place to start. Even well, even in New York, you look at New York comics that started in New York. They had such a different journey mm. than the than the Chicago expats or the Denver expats or mm. the North Carolina expats that go to go to New York. So like you, I'm noticing like whether it's LA or New York. If you're coming from Chicago, for example, you can link up with Chicago expats that are in L.A. and it's easier to connect Mm. that way. Now, I had an advantage of when I moved there, there was a show that I was helping run from the get go. And this show had been going on for 10 years. It's called Comedy in English. It's at a youth hostel. So the show is run like a machine now. So I already am getting guaranteed stage time Mm. twice a week. So that's because the challenge of a place like L.A. New York. I mean, I still think New York, it's. You know, there's shows every night of the week and it's, you know, you go to the different boroughs and you can find your way through L.A. It really is difficult to get more than like four or five sets in mm. like a week. It's very challenging. The, the mic scene there is hot garbage. That's you know? what's that's what's kept me here. Yeah. It's like I don't want to go to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go from like being busy all the time to literally being able to go up any night of the week to like. Now, certainly to nothing. You, yeah. If you, you know? get lucky where, you know, if you get an opportunity to maybe be a door guy at the store or something, because the store and the improv, <laughs> which if you notice, the Laugh Factory is mm. kind of doing that again, where you can work at the club and get spots out of it. But for a while, it felt like the Laugh Factory wasn't really letting a lot of people work there and get spots. There were tons of people like working there mm-hmm. who weren't getting stage time. But it seems like we're going back to that now where you can be part of the like the feeder system at a club mm-hmm. work the door and get spots so there's a comedy store in la that's kind of the hip hangout place it's not really, they have a laugh factory okay. in la but you can't really hang out at the laugh factory in la they're not they're not a big fan of that so the store is really the big hangout they have a patio out front mm. you know you're seeing people there's three different rooms where there's shows going on every night of the week if it's not full they're very cool with people like young comics going and sitting so to me there are ways to get up in la but it's i i still believe that chicago is still one of the best incubator cities for comedy this is well, if you want to yeah. get good you got to come here i, I, I think, still think about that. if that had worked any other job mm-hmm. like you know i've been uh, been a janitor at northwestern hospital and now i'm doing heart surgeries <laughs> so i was showing up every year every for, for three uh, years I just now been I, just, I, I just no no medical training picked up a thing i pulled out a heart the other day he <laughs> killed the guy but hey i killed <laughs> <laughs> so stupid <laughs> Hey, Glenn, throw me that scalpel. Yeah. Watch this. Watch, watch, watch. This. What is my closer? Watch this. Watch, hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll be here all week. <laughs> Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. <laughs> you, put your, you just put your earlobe to somebody's belly button? Appendicitis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on TikTok. Dr. Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Talk. Oh, Doc Talk. I don't want to be at all Cat Williams and be like controversial, but something you said where you're like, mm. I think people are on stage every night of the week trying to get better. I would almost argue that that's not exactly what everybody's doing, which kind of w- I mm. wish more people were doing. Mm. I feel like there's a small. I remember Chris Red said this to me before he left. He was before he blew up. He's like, you just got to work harder than anybody in the room. And that sounds like such cliche sure. advice. But I don't think it's hard, that hard to do. Sadly, okay. like I don't think if you want to work hard, 
you don't have to work that much harder than a lot of people. Because mm. I think people are now approaching comedy like they're blue collar workers at a construction site. They're clocking in, they pack their lunch, yeah, they yeah. go on break for, to smoke, they come to their set, all right, gotta schlep over to the next open mic, clock in, yeah. do the, and they're doing the same set. They're not like growing or trying or experimenting. And then they're building their name up like in the scene and they're crushing in the open mics. And then I watch them just waffle on stage at these clubs. And it's mm. like, you know, if getting funny was like people's priority, like I feel like like that would you would want to be growing, not just in the open mic community. You'd want to be growing like all over the city. That was why it was so funny about jokes and notes when it was open. Mm -hmm. Like I could literally count on my hand how many white comics I saw come through there in five sure. years. And it was like two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Literally like two or three comics. Like yeah. th and they're they're like, oh, I always want to come with you, but uh, it's just you know. It's not for nothing. Well, they'll blame the drive. <laughs> right. Not drive. not not for nothing. Just a little pushback on you. I, I have a couple of thoughts. So what? For, I'm not not for nothing for. Each one of the white comics, there is a definite number of black comics that you're not going to see go north of Roosevelt to hit north side mics or whatnot. Some people can just be incubated. But here's here's what I'm wondering too, though, right? I think some of the some of the people on their journey, where they make it to, the middle of the pack, is their their goal, or they just don't have a goal in general. Like for the for the Olympic like for the Olympic bike team or whatever. There's somebody that's perpetually fourth through eighth place their entire career. And that's they still go for the tryouts. They still go to practice. They still suit up. They're still in whatever goofy group chats talking about. They're, they're, they're like, they're like, yeah, 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 they're yeah. like Joe Flacco of yeah. comics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But they're fine with it. I have, I have, and I'm not gonna drop any names, man. I have a, a guy I've known since high school, and and he doesn't live here, but I follow him on the socials. And I just saw him on, um, I just saw him on Kill Tony, right? And he's posting up some content from the show. This happened not too long ago, and on the the con so he has a clip, and I'm like, oh, okay. Let me check out this clip from Kill Tony. That's pretty decent. <laughs> and uh, Kill Tony just shits on him. Mm. Guy posts two clips. Both clips, one he's like, I don't want to give too much away because you might be able to find out who I'm talking <laughs> about. But on both clips, Kill Tony was, uh, w w the guy's name, I forget his Hitch name. Hitchcliff. Uh, Hitchcliff. Hitchcliff. Yeah. Is one he's like, no, this isn't, this isn't good. <laughs> like twice, he just told him to his face, this isn't good. My we, guy we that need, I'm talking that, about, the, the guy that I'm talking about, he posted it. On his page, one I, I I would I just wouldn't have posted. That. Why would you post? That? I would have erased yeah. all inklings that that ever happened off the the blockchain or whatever. He posts it, writes a little caption that's favoring himself, right? Of course. And then the his his the next of a his next post after that is I shit you not. This is so specific. You know I'm not bullshitting you. Yeah. His next post after he posts these two clips of getting shitted on, going on tour, is no. It's even better. It is it is a edited clip of Fat Joe going yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like what? Now in his mind there's certain comics on the on the scene that have silver bulletproof confidence that I just uh, don't understand. I that I'm concur. like, holy moly, how are you not affected by what you just did right. on that That's stage? That's what I'm talking about. So when you were saying the pushback, I first I concur that there would be like black comics that would never that wouldn't sure. Go but what I will say is when Jokes Notes closed, everybody was like homeless, like they just scattered. So oh, that's yeah, where yeah, yeah. a lot of people. I mean, the core group. If you look at like the core group yeah, from yeah. Jokes and Notes. Like like Mike Samp, Tanisha, T yeah. Murph, all those people that were there every week, like they everybody was sort of forced to grow. It was a tent pole yeah. comedy. Place. So it was great because everybody who has been at Jokes and Notes is like killing because they were yeah. they're forced to like navigate and learn different rooms and make, yes, make yes. their own start rooms. their own. Right? Yeah, and, that's, and stuff happened and evolved and it was great because of it. It's as sad as it was at the close. So I hear what you're saying about that, but um, my only con like beef is when people. Who are that like like you said that that like you know bronze medalist for their whole career or whatever yeah like that they are the ones that are like setting these like comedic 
rules and boundaries of like you know you want to get taken seriously this is what you got to do and they're like oh. they've become like the voice that these new comics are, are striving to be and they like, become gatekeepers what are you striving to be to yeah. be stuck in the same oh, yeah, yeah, mold yeah. as this person who's mm. done nothing what are you doing yeah. and like they're hypnotic by it they're they're like hypnotized by by tenure as if tenure equates success that's like tangible but a lot of times it's not it's just You've been here too long, and now you're like you're like this legend. If you stay here long enough, you'll become like a legend. They're the and overweight that's not physical trainers. Thing. That's like the, that's not the, necessarily yeah. like a bad thing that you're here and you can become a legend. There's, like, <laughs> there's legend be status, and then there's like notoriety. Yeah. Like yeah. you just oh that guy just keeps coming to the mics. But the he's weirdest like, yeah. people, the weirdest people are the ones that choose that that have the talent. Though you take a Tony Woods, which is Dave Chappelle's whole career. Mm. I mean, if you watch his mannerisms, his speech patterns, his yeah. joke patterns, you can you can dial back Dave Chappelle to, oh, you were took Tony Woods took you under his wing, and then you went, and he strikes me as somebody who could give a square shaped shit what his Instagram is doing, <laughs> what a clip is doing, what a whatever. He's probably somewhere right now going on his second and a half hour of comedy at a fucking no-name bar somewhere in Bucktosla, Oklahoma, <laughs> just for the love of the fucking game. Comedy you know what I mean? journeyman or something. Yeah. yeah. He's the BJ Armstrong. He's just, BJ you know, BJ Armstrong <laughs> on a blacktop yeah. somewhere in, <laughs> yeah. in Tucson. Right. Just playing w- with a bunch of fucking 19-year-olds because wh- why not? Mm. But uh, honestly has the chops has the talent could could still be out there going not saying that he's not i don't follow his career that much because he doesn't make his career followable mm. that's i mean that's a big point that's, a, that's he's a, not that's playing that point. part of the game he's playing the show part but not the business part that's a big point too because art, i think so comics. many people are not like you said they're not focused mm. and they don't even know what they're doing that like we in that like zombie got to go to Coles Got to go to the next mm. bike. Got to do the same set. Must impress the masses of comedians. Mm. Like you're in this, like you're like a zombie. It's like freaking Walking Dead, right? You oh, yeah. you lose what should be the focus. You're a brand. You are you're mm. selling yourself to clubs. Yeah. They need to know that you're a trustworthy product. You're not gonna you know show up late, got or just not show up, <laughs> which has been happening a lot at shows that I'm doing. It's like, oh, you just decided to stay in and get high. Cool. Like Fair you enough. forgot about the, the lineup. Like where it's like then there's like tolerance from bookers. So yeah, let's be let's be Cat Williams here and call oh, a yeah, spade yeah, a spade. Yeah. You know, it's like how certain you know bookers are just okay with certain comics canceling last minute but then if you do it it's like a you know a mortal sin it's like what oh, how yeah. so there's favoritism there's, there's a hierarchy yeah in, in the scene you know. and it's like what is this nonsense play play and there's play no rules figure. behind who's getting the favoritism yes you know. be a good booker mm. don't be a lazy booker and be people booking tiktok stars or creating bookings based on who you are friends with like there's mm. it's so incestuous that's the problem with a lot of it and that's just comedy comedy's never going to be truly like you know monitored like that that's why people yeah. you know back in the day at Zanies, a lot of people hated it and like i preferred it because it was like you knew where you stood with and the you booker. always yeah. had a booking mm-hmm. it was like january 1st you got your bookings for the year, mm-hmm. and if you were not going to get a booking, you were told exactly what you need to work on and why, and you mm-hmm. were given an opportunity to uh, to correct it at these Rising Star showcases, and yeah, yeah. then you got work. There was like a path. There was a clear path. Now there is literally almost no club in Chicago has any path to get no. in. Yeah. Everybody's messaging me all the time, like, how do I get in here? How do I, who do I, what do I got to do? They hate me. <laughs> they, they think like oh, literally yeah. every booker in the city hates them. They're comparing, oh, I, 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 I tried to stay high, but they looked like they, mm. they were <laughs> upset. And then they, they, they hate me. I know they hate me. Like they're like these. They were hiding men- their office the yeah, whole time. Mental, oh, yeah. These mental games that they're playing <laughs> with themselves. But we, comics are, we, we, they're, they're we not seek that validation. Yeah. We but have you, that deficiency. Yeah, so, but you can't yeah. just assume that because you showed up to Saturday night at a club and the booker happened to be there and you couldn't corner them to talk about bookings <laughs> while 900 people were waiting to get right. seated. Yeah. You can't, you got to like have some sense mm-hmm. of, and don't be on the spectrum at that moment. Be like, oh, yeah. Okay. Lose that spectrum. Yeah. They're the, tied the, the up. Touch yeah. of the it's, like, it's like in, uh, in Oppenheimer's like, yeah. what did, what did you say to Albert Einstein? He said nothing. He was talking about something way more important than you. You know, he made it about himself. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even he was a douche, right? He made that whole thing and then went, yeah, don't use this, guys. 
<laughs> Give me the money, but please don't press the button. I like the, the government contract, but now you know. <laughs> don't be ir- out of all the uh, out of all the isms. I think the most hypocritical one is nepotism, mm. because it's the one that is the easiest to talk shit about, and the one that I I'm not even gonna front. I'm not, I won't speak for you two, but I definitely fucking do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like for when it comes to bookings or or anything, something like this. Like you guys, you know, did stages with both of you guys, and then it's just conversation. It's comics. You guys are my favorite people in the world because we can say things and not get offended. By the way, officially, to whoever this may concern, if you call yourself a comic and you get offended by anything anybody says ever, call yourself something else. Call yourself an entertainer or whatever. You're not allowed to be offended by people's fucking words and call yourself a comedian. (laughs) That's the opposite of what we do dickhead i said but, i literally said that the other day i go i go you could be upset by a joke sure and you could be upset yeah. by you're a comedian a human being you're, but yeah. you are literally no one i ever want to hang out with you're not allowed to, <laughs> yes. a joke can hit home yeah absolutely and you but every joke hits home to somebody right. we that's all the along. point of yeah. it and so when it hits home to you you just go Woo. That's all right I, that's, where I, that's where i draw the I line ca- yeah i caught one but when it comes to like the nepotism like what part of the world what part of any job you're a fucking you're a uh, you're you're you work on a, a garbage truck and so-and-so's uncle that owns the shop gives the good roots to to bobby phil and and you know christina is dating yeah. george so they're up in fucking wherever gold coast and you're on you know what i mean like you're oh, down on old block that well that's what that's what the beauty of comedy is right like we pretend like we're in this microcosm that's unique we are living in the world yeah we're literally living the in the same world, world as everybody yeah else. there's jealousy in corporate world there's people that get promotions that they don't think they deserve exactly it. there's yeah. people that come in and you know take mm. a job because you're too old or too whatever and you know that's just the way it is that's the that's the world and yeah, people yeah. like like to Oh, I can't believe that guy only got booked because he's the son of so and so. Well, guess what? Yeah. Learn to not be some schmuck that just when you approach a booker, like you're approaching them, like, can I get, can I get, can I get, can I get, can I get? It's like a date. You got to be charming. Be a person. Exactly. Be a human being. Yeah. Exactly. Second City, that was the first thing they said, but they said, we won't, we would rather hire somebody with less talent that was not annoying and going to be reliable and funny versus somebody who's more talented, but it's a pain in the ass and they have an ego. Oh, mm-hmm. So think about yeah. that, like with you or anything in your life, who you want to hang out with? You want to hang out with people that are just a like pleasant up your, up seven your, yeah. over, over a <laughs> High douche bag 12, 10 12. Yeah. all day. Yo. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> people forget that you got to be a human being in an industry where like people mm. are just not used to human <laughs> beings. Like they're used to autistic people that are like, Hey, Hey, I hope mm. to get on that uh, new material Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I really, yeah, I yeah. sent you a clip like 75 times. Did you open your email? Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. Oh, who's going to want to book that? Oh, uh, the, the, show up, charm, be charming, be yourself. That's what the, the funniest story. I don't have many LA stories, but I went to the comedy store one night from, a, I met a comic in Chicago. He had lined here and he was like, come to my show at the comedy store. So I just went and went upstairs. My friend had a show at the belly room. So they came downstairs. I got mm. water and I was just hanging out on the wall, just like sitting there, just taking it all in. Cause there was like, people were like famous everywhere mm. and people just kept coming There's up. So to much me, history there. Coming too, up to me. They're like starting that. conversations mm-hmm. with me. And then she's like, how's your night going? I'm like, good. And we talked for like five minutes. She walked away and some kids were like, how do you know her? I was like, I don't know her. He's like, she's like a huge exec at NBC. Did you get any contact information? And I was like, no, I'm just hanging out here. Yeah, being and, natural. And because yeah. I was you mean, with that not, human being. Yeah, 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 because I was not being this like shark. That was enough to get me mm-hmm. five comics, famous mm. comics, and famous people to stop and like talk. And it's like people yeah. don't think about that. Because we, we are human. I'm so glad that you gave me an end to slip in my L.A. story. <laughs> Thank you in. so much, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> no. We have broken the L.A. hymen. <laughs> all, all, all L.A. stories are coming out. Now. But this is literally the moment that I stopped doing the opposite of what you just said. Is I'm, 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 I just joined the military. I'm in California for like a year and some change, yeah. waiting for my security clearance. I don't even know how they ended up passing me. I did. I shouldn't have got it. <laughs> but um, me and my guys, so we're all 19, 20, 21 ish, drive out to L.A. just to go kick it on a weekend. Right. And we're in the Beverly Center at the Foot Locker. Uh, Tretch from Naughty by Nature is there. Mm-hmm. So this is 2000 and 2009. Maybe. No, no. It, this is, yeah, this is like early 2000s, like 
2000 or 2001. Yeah, pre 9-11. Okay. <laughs> I see uh, Tretz there, and he had just walked in. He has security. By the way, Tretz from Naughty by Nature, humongous fucking dude. <laughs> and his security guard twice his size. And I was like, oh, shit, that's Tretch. And there was a line of, like, four kids. And then I stopped, and I got to the back of the line. And every and the line was too short because I had realized it before I got to him. I was like, what the fuck am I do? Like, it occurred to me in my 19-year-old brain, like, there's just a grown man that wanted to come grab, <laughs> like, some sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> like, after the next two kids leave, what am I going to say to him? <laughs> like, if I walked in and there was a line that formed, I'd be like, what? Uh, okay, excuse me, are the phone posits here? Like, out of my way, kid. <laughs> and I said, I'm n- never again. I can't. Like, what's the what's the point in this? Mm. Y- you know, like, unless he was my absolute favorite of all time. And even then, you walk by, give him a little elbow nudge and say, hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. what you do. Something yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah, and then keep it moving. Otherwise, I'm like, y- you're, a g- you're a dude. Like, you're a regular, right. smegular guy. Yeah, Plus, yeah, all of us are courting so that. You got to read the situation, too. Like, I'm, I'll, I'll throw an L.A. story out. I was doing a show near UCLA, and Brian Cranston, who played Walter White, played yeah, yeah. he was he happened to be near UIC because he, he at UCLA, and he was doing a play as well. So we're both kind of in the thing. And I just, I'm a big Breaking Bad fan, so sure. I kinda, we kind of – but we were walking. We were in the vicinity. I saw him kind of look at me. And I just went, hey, man, just big fan. I read your book. Love stuff, and then we had like a five minute conversation. You yeah. said, "Oh, hey, what's your name?" Like he was giving off the vibe of, "Okay, hey, you're, I'm reading what you're saying." He asked me what my name is. We talked for five minutes, and I shook his hand and I left. Yeah. See, okay. I wonder if it'd be funnier or if they would be pissed if instead of like being sincere, you just walked up to him and was like, <laughs> "Screw you, Mr. White, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. bitch." Yeah. Just call him a bitch yeah. and walk away. Can, can I ask you? Can I ask you? Uh, yeah. Breaking Bad versus The Wire. <sighs> I never finished The Wire. I was obsessed with Breaking Bad. I okay. started both of them like at the same time. I'm gonna late. go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'm give the enough. inch to. I'll give an inch to Breaking Bad, but the wire is still an amazing. All show. right. Can I tell you why I wholly disagree? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so now I might go. Home so and Breaking Bad. The wire. Breaking Bad is essentially the wire for white trash, right? <laughs> <laughs> basically, the, basically the same storyline. You have schools, well, you have drugs, <laughs> you have cops, and you have the interplay between all of them, right? That being said, that being said, you're telling me that the next door neighbor who happens to be the brother-in-law to the wife of the disgraced school teacher, science biology teacher, says... He wasn't disgraced at the time. He uh, but like, he, yeah. he says, man, oh, a whole bunch of drugs are popping up and all the triple beams are missing and, and some <laughs> some chemistry like, genius we're going through, is, we're going through diapers. is scientifying <laughs> <laughs> fucking methamphetamines on the street. <laughs> Who would have these capabilities, brother-in-law, <laughs> that matches everything that I just mentioned? Yeah. Help me figure this out, guy that I see... Every Five day. times a week that all of a sudden has money to overpay his mortgage. <laughs> How can we get to the bottom of this? Well, it was, yeah, they, they lied to him and said it was gambling. Uh, <laughs> it's a great cover. I, th- I think it speaks to the brother-in-law just thought so shitty of his of that of Walter White. He didn't think he had any sort of. You think he could be successful yeah, yeah, yeah. as a person yeah. or a drug lord? They yeah, did yeah. the whole gu- in the in the pilot. I remember he's like, "Hey, hold a gun," <laughs> and they did the improv gun thing. Like, oh, I'm hold it like this. Hold it like this. He's like, you might, you might, "Your balls might drop." Now he just he looked at him like a wimp. So I think it was just it just it didn't it didn't fathom him. Or I had, he 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 couldn't even <laughs> see this guy being a tough guy at all. So I really think that's what kept it going. For I w- it. I am a, a Brian Cranston fan. And who was the other guy? Is it Paul something? Uh, Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah, did. yeah. He was. Man, he had some stuff okay, in here's, there that here, was... I, I give oof. Breaking Bad the inch simply because... Not that The Wire... Wire is amazing, but there's there's that dark comic like tone, undertone <clears throat> of Breaking Bad. Sure. And I just think it just appealed to me sl- just a slightly a little bit more just because of the... Com- then the Omar... <laughs> You're telling me a Omar couple of Brian funny. Cranston jokes beats the 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 gay shotgun toting Robin Hood gangster <laughs> of Baltimore, that. Maryland. Are you kidding me? New Mexico versus Baltimore. That's really what we're doing. <laughs> Chew, do. <laughs> you telling me that, that awkward ass accent doesn't beat? Where were they at? Arizona or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New, uh, Albuquerque. Yeah, uh, yeah, Albuquerque. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesse. Jazak. <clears throat> That's one of my oldest jokes was when that show came out when I said uh, 
I wanted to write a new show about a crystal meth dealer that changes his whole life around and becomes, <laughs> he a, becomes, and becomes a, a teacher. <laughs> and then he dies of cancer. It's called it's Bad, bad mm. Breaks. Bad Breaks in reverse. What's, uh, <laughs> what's the most interesting uh, meth-adjacent story you got? Because <laughs> meth, adjacent. meth has, if, has touched every single one of our lives, I'm sure. <laughs> Not directly, by no, the way. Yeah. I've never done it, but boy, do I. <laughs> so hilarious. <laughs> Old meth, meth <laughs> buddies. <laughs> Well, when you see somebody chewing that invisible bubble gum, <laughs> oh man, when they're chewing da that, da 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 <laughs> when that jaw gets to work and you know it's about to be off the chain, <laughs> is that bubblelicious or you just been up for four well, days? The funny part that you're asking that, my brother was a used to be a state trooper and he said that he, like he would always arrest people that had meth. Yeah, and uh, he he picked up a guy one time. Who, who 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 like came at him? He's like, he's like, be careful where you're walking. Uh, and he picks up a stick and he holds it up to my brother and he goes, "I found this wire." <laughs> my brother's like, "What?" And then one time, so my brother lives in the used to live in like the sticky part of like West Virginia. It was a yeah. town called Gasaway. Sounds like a stomach and acid. <laughs> and we're literally watching television one night, like the Yankees game. And he comes downstairs and he's got his gun and he's like putting it on his and he's like, "I'll be back in about ten minutes." Uh, if Allie comes downstairs, <laughs> lock the door. Oh my That's my niece. Yeah. I go, what's happening? He goes, there's a meth house across the street in that trailer. We're uh. going to break it up. And I go, are you kidding me? He goes, look out the window. And I peer down the window. There's like 14 cop cop cars all getting ready to bust into this thing. <laughs> and he's like, just lock the door. If you hear anything, don't open the door. So I'm like, this is literally like Breaking Bad happening. Yeah, outside yeah, your yeah, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're living what color is the meth? <laughs> yeah. I got to leave. Freaking van or Winnebago, whatever it was. I worked I worked construction as a union carpenter in Omaha, Nebraska for six years. I the meth people, some of the hardest workers you're ever gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> They're working for the meth. <laughs> to get their that next, sounds their like next a song hit. from the eighties. <laughs> yeah, working for the meth. <laughs> I've been working on the railroad <laughs> for my crystal world. Oh. Oh yeah, man. I mean, there's the uh, we were. I was driving back on the highway with uh, mm-hmm. one of the supervisors. This guy's making six figures a year. We're on the highway doing seventy, coming back from like Kansas or Iowa, wherever we were working at, and he, he did, we're, we're doing seventy three, seventy eight miles an hour. He got the window down. We're smoking squares, and he goes, "Yep, somebody's cooking meth." <laughs> <laughs> what? He just smelled it in the air. <laughs> Like Those flatlands, yeah, cast an eye, huh? they love it. <laughs> it is like the, like it's it's funny to I'm I always wonder why like crackhead is funny to say and talk about, but meth head like yeah I don't know it or sounds serious. dirtier, but it's also mm. more around right because mm. it's not when you think crackhead you have to get coke and then the process mm. and in your you know base you know whatever and then. If it's meth, you can get it from your local meth R Us, or you can just go to CVS get Sudafed. and get make your own. a version of it. But you need like kit. 70 boxes of Sudafed mm. to make Or how many Adderalls? I don't, I don't know. I think it's hilarious that I get carded every time. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm stocking up Sudafed nuggets that I'm going to crush down <laughs> and sell to the youth at Lane Tech. <laughs> get out of here. You might be hiding in plain sight because if there was anybody that that would do that, it would be. Imagine, imagine that. They're like, Bonazzo's in jail. He was selling crystal meth. What was he doing? <laughs> we can, he was in Highland Park. <laughs> me, me and my girl, we just went to uh, the Bulls versus uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. And um, it was her. First, it was both of our first uh, Bulls game. And uh, she was asking about Benny the Bull. And I was like, I don't I, Look him up. Like, you don't know about Benny the Bull? He's crazy and she looked him up and i didn't even notice that the last benny the bull and i just heard um john mulaney's opener i guess his mom was dating the guy but the i don't know one or two benny the bull the george clooney benny the bull okay. got uh fucking busted for selling drugs out of his car in full costume Best in benny costume. I, I call, it's, I call it's benny on the, the wikipedia <laughs> 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 That, I don't know. That's hilarious if that's true. Is it's it true? on Wikipedia. I'm, I'm wondering, so I'm wondering what year this was. Like, 
if, it's, it's, if it's too Benny Bulls ago, you know. Yeah. They're Bowen Krauss, but not Benny the Bull. <laughs> this is the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I didn't take advantage of my drug days the way I should have, no, right? I, I overtook advantage. <laughs> no I'm, kidding. I'm like lucky that I'm alive. You don't strike me as no, the uh, overtake I, advantage. That's because I almost died three times, so I'm like, I'm glad I'm here. No shit. Yeah. Can you talk about it at yeah, all? What was it, the what was the dumb, uh, dumb, dumb, dumb stuff? Just, like you just o- OD'd uh, on Ritalin? Uh, no, just... <laughs> 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 You're from Jersey. You're a little bitch. <laughs> It's like the, it's like my glasses on, glasses off joke. Like you know what the fuck I've been through. Hey. <laughs> like, oh, he's a different guy now. <laughs> Anthony, what's wrong? Anthony. Robotus and my. <laughs> we did that. We did that too. <laughs> that was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Uh, <clears throat> just dumb, dumb shit like hmm. drugs. You know, like stuff that was like laced, and then um, I never like just just when you're in that zone of stu- stupid decision making yeah you continue to make stupid decisions because you're not really thinking about that it's a stupid decision you're just no one's really there like people are getting mad at you but no one's really like correcting and telling you why that's why no. i think it's dumb to cancel people cuz they're not really learning like louis didn't learn to not pull his dick out anymore he just he got caught went away for a while <laughs> he went to paris yeah, he went yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like in the mob he went away for a while yeah. you know? that's the way you get into the starbucks at paris yeah. by the yeah, way yeah, yeah. you need to pull your dick <laughs> so stupid they put a weight around your dick <laughs> so i just wasn't paying attention to anything and just kept doing dumb shit and then i'd never forget i was like five o'clock in the morning i was dating this girl and she was like, well, come over. And I was, you know, whatever inst- whatever state of mind I was in. And I drove to go see her in, like, a snowstorm. And, like, mm. in the middle of the night. And it was high school. Like, and her mom woke up. She's like, Jackie, who the hell is that? <laughs> and she's like, you got to get out of here. She's going to kill you. You're Italian. Like, she, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like I was like, your mom doesn't like Italians in <laughs> Germany? <laughs> so I'm, like, having, like, a panic attack. I, like, run out of the house. And I'm driving down, like, a, like a, in the snowstorm back home. And I just remember being, like, like what am I doing with my life? And like it was snowing and it was really icy. And as I was like getting nervous that I was gonna get caught, that I snuck out with my dad's car, I all of a sudden it's in that moment that you realize that your car has gone into like a full spin. Oh, so I spun yeah. like six times. And I man, when people tell you like, like your life flashed before your yeah, eyes. Matrix like, speed. I have no qualms talking about this because it was like one of those like spiritual religious experiences where it was not like. I saw the light or like I yeah. saw God or an angel and they were nice. I literally saw like a vision of like the Virgin Mary and she was like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? No like you are ruining a blessing that you've been given. Like, what are you? It was like a- almost anger and disappointment. And I just remember hearing boom and I went right into a telephone pole and I was like, am I fucking am I dead? Like everything was you like, felt like out of body. I was like, what's ha- yeah. what just happened? Am I dead now? Like and I got out of the car and I was like, all right, phew, I'm alive. The car's fine. Mm. Let me just get home. And then I look around the side of the car. The, f- the car yeah. is completely totaled. Yeah. Dad's brand new car totaled. Ooh. And I mean, it literally looked like a, like a like an elephant just kicked the side of it in. Mm. I was like, oh, my God. And that was like sort of like the the moment where it was like two paths were going to like it was like a the two paths split, you know, like which one are you going to take? And I, you know, I'll never forget like having to wake up my mom and like tell her what happened, and then and, and, like having to confront my parents in the morning, and and then it was like you, I was either gonna like keep going down that path and mm. probably end up dead, or like change shit around. And I really wasn't ready to like change shit around. I was still like young, and I was like, I still want to hang out and do shit, and mm. you know. And uh, I think I a couple, I did like a couple stupid little things. Yeah, and got lucky, and then like thought I was gonna die again, and then I was like, what are you, what are you doing? And that's when I just sort of was like, I got to retire this life for now anyway. And then I just got kind of like on a straight path and then I just sort of never looked back. Mm. But in retrospective, like if I didn't stop, I don't think I would have ever. Sure. Stopped. Of course not. And now with fentanyl, that's Russian roulette with four bullets. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it was, a, it was a lot of dumb, dumb little things that added up to the big things mm. that almost and led probably to they, like they built demise. off of your domino. Yeah. Of course, yeah. I was selling drugs at one point. I was sure, like, what yeah. am I doing? My parents like found my like Stash. drugs and stuff and all these <laughs> yeah. books on like psychedelics and <laughs> I was like getting into weird shit and I'm like what am I doing and and I hid it in this drawer too <laughs> and 
I remember like the week before my friend Mike had gotten caught and his parents, but they, when they sat him down, they go, Mike, we found your grass. Mm. <laughs> They're calling grass and I don't think my mom said that to me. Like she somehow got into this drawer. I rig broke to this regular up. drawer. I, that's it was, out like, in the all open. All these like paraphernalia, uh, like tools and has a sticker that says, do not touch yeah, girls. Like, not allowed like, on the outside. <laughs> like, don't smoke this. It's crack. You know? Like it was all this crazy shit. In this Radioactive drawer. sticker. And my mom, my mom got like nervous. And like stuck a screwdriver in the drawer and like opened it Try and found Jimmy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I was getting ready to go out and she's like, Anthony, we need to talk to you. And I go, I, I'm not, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't have time for this. I'm going outside. Like, I'll just go outside. And I'm a like, drug dealer, man. Like, I'm a, you know who I am? I'm the biggest Italian drug lord in the city. And she goes, we, I'm Walter Tan. She goes, Well, we, found, we found this. And she throws like this like pound of weed on the table. And I was like, Oh. I go, that's not mine. It's oregano. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I'm making pizza pies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. My favorite part of that story was the Goodfellas moment that you had with your girlfriend. Cover, cover that here. up. They she like, she <laughs> thinks you're Jewish. <laughs> Just the good half. <laughs> One guy looking that way, one guy looking that way, and the <laughs> guy in the middle going, "Hey, what you want from me?" I almost, I want to buy that painting from my, you have my to. new apartment. Just, you have just, to. just to be able to like have like be a talk piece. Uh, Pratik, there's no way to uh, not make this uh, yeah. racial. Uh, yes. What's your background? Uh, uh, ethnicity. Yeah, uh, should I say? my my family's from India originally. Uh, I grew up here. Not not that uh, not that interesting. <laughs> F- fair enough. But so the last name the last names mean something for in India, no? Uh, the significance of the last name is it's actually it's actually very con- it's it's North India it's like the Upper Peninsula of India. Oh, I heard they're there. You guys the up north are the uh, ooh the do you guys the, do the, the little the mitten thing uh, too. Diddy ones the prima donna <laughs> like, <laughs> like Michigan like Upper Peninsula. So that's what you're thinking of as Punjabis, which I because of my facial hair I get confused mm. for that mm. a lot. The Punjabis are like the flashy like uh, all the okay decked out and all the gold chains and the shirts and everything. Uh, then you also have you have uh, six. Those are the guys with the turbans and the beards. They're okay. like our Danny Trejos. They're like our warrior class. They'll, mm. they'll hold up literally like swords and gut people. The the know. sword from Aladdin they got. Uh, yeah, it's a different type of sword. <laughs> <laughs> Similar in shape. Not a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be sword racist. It's okay. <laughs> it's like Pratik, this may, there's no way to sound this racist. Do you have an Aladdin sword? Do you have an Aladdin? <laughs> I have, I, have, I have a sword brush. This brush becomes a sword. Yeah, you, don't think you, you, you swipe it forward and it turns into a, uh, a lightsaber. Prince Ali right here. Marvel, we did all the heavy lifting for you. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, yeah. Where, where is Brown Elephant? Where's that superhero? We need Fair that enough, guy. right? We have Mowgli from Jungle Book. That's who we got. That's, Ooh. Our, that's our superhero. That's but, our, but easily one of the better uh, old school Disney movies. Right, one right? of the best. I, I agree. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah. And they didn't over. It wasn't. It's not overly racist. Yeah. Like, there's nothing racist about like little boy that goes lives with animals. It's just like no, it's fun. I don't like that 2000. The the the, the 2000s we're in now, like the last 10 years, yeah. are pointing out things that I just took for granted and saying, hey, you know that was racist your whole life. <laughs> like, I, you know how much I love Dumbo growing up? Yeah, what's wrong? And they're like, hey, they're like, hey, you know those, you know those crows are, are taking a complete shit on your entire family's uh, heritage. Uh-huh. And I was like, what? I seen a peanut stand. I seen a rubber band. <laughs> I seen a needle that winked his eye. That guy. <laughs> that was Walt Disney taking shit. That racist. Oh my god. My. Um. I'm asking this because there was a comic, uh, Indian comic. Don't get me to. La- I don't want to say his name. I don't remember it completely. Yeah. But I remember him telling me, and he was an open micer. I think yeah. he's first year and a half, two years. And I remember him telling me the lead up. To his arranged marriage through his folks. Okay. And him being like, yo, I don't know about... Because he was a young guy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to say early 20s. And he's like, yeah, I don't... And you know, we're just doing after the gig open mic comedy talk and shit. And this is maybe two years ago, sure. almost three years ago. Yeah. He's like, yeah, man, I don't know what's up with this. And woo woo. And this is going to be, you know, this is crazy. <laughs> but it is what it is. Woo. And now he's completely <laughs> off the scene. <laughs> Yeah, wow, wow, we will. He's, he's <laughs> off the <laughs> scene, <laughs> and I see him. He, I have him on my timeline, but once you're once you're off the comedy scene, I got no time. No, I mean, like you're uh, there's you're so many comedians. We we've met so many people over the years, and there's that thing of oh, I saw them, I saw them at the store. Yeah, or, or it's like you either you either you either be, get married or like child, or you die, or you go into real estate. Those are the those are the four yeah, post comedy options. Quit. You quit with a big announcement, or you yeah. quit with no one. No one else. I, I respect the people who make no announcements. Oh, I, that's absolutely. the way to do it. Just walk out. Yeah. And then I just remember that I forgot you one day, and I go, <laughs> hey, whatever happened? 
Kevin Black. Yeah, yeah. And, then it's, and then it says their name, mm-hmm. Ad Friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, they're gone and a new life. <laughs> then the screen like turns black and white. Right. <laughs> yeah. start really, it's, like, it's like, uh, what's his name in Goodfellas, starting over the witness yeah. protection. Yeah. <laughs> Starting a new life. <laughs> you see a comic in a doorway going, <laughs> yeah, I'm a schmuck. Their comic profile was that used to go by Jimmy Whispers. What's it going by now? Jimmy, Jimmy. Hey, I'm out to add some tags. Add some tags. <laughs> add a friend at a time. Is that is that a part? So you sound uh, uh, generally removed from uh, uh, from maybe that aspect of the culture. But I, is that I think that's uh, uh, that's more of it. Really depends on the family. Like there are, there are mm. conservative families, there are liberal families. My family, my mm. parents, uh, they went to an English medium school in India. They went they they, learned, they went to a Catholic school. That was sort of a status thing mm. back then. If you're in India and you're going to a Catholic school and learning English, like whoa. You oh, might wow. move to America, you or you might move to Europe or something. Like mm. you, you were looked at as, whoa, you're like a higher, not not a higher caste. That's a very, it's funny. Everybody's like, oh, what about caste system? Like that's an antiquated thing. That's that's something that European <laughs> fucktards want us to think that our people hate each other. <laughs> sure, more. sure. We hate each other on our own. We don't need. <laughs> of course, we don't need a system. <laughs> of course, we all <laughs> do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the, there's levels to it, but yeah, that would be something a more conservative family might do. You don't see. I'm. I'm not going to speak for all. I'm not going to speak for a billion sure. people. Not going to do that. But you don't see it as much nowadays. Uh, what parents might do, they may introduce you know kids to one Fair another. Fair enough. But you're still you're getting to communicate with them because the the act, what what a traditional arranged marriage is is you don't see the person until you get married. You you can't even communicate. You can't mm. do anything. It's like something that's decided when you're 10. Like, oh, my my second mm. son will marry your third whatever or something, your third cousin or something. That's mm. a traditional arranged marriage. What is more common now, if anything, is a parent might suggest, hey, this person is single. They might do like a like what a yeah. dating app is. Like they might matchmake a little bit. Um, my parents don't give a flying fuck. They're just like, sure. hey, you Maybe don't die alone. Like, if you can find <laughs> someone, that'd be great, you know? Yeah. It's funny because my sister uh, is seeing someone, but before she met this current person she's seeing, she actually went to my mother and said, oh, please introduce me to someone. Like, play the parental matchmaking game. And she wanted that, mm. which was not common. So my parents kind of laughed. They're like, you want us to do that? Uh, right, right, right. So she met a few people and then didn't work out. She didn't like them. And then she found someone through, I think she used Bumble or something. She found someone. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's mm. it's ver- it's not very common nowadays. Now, you know, I'm sure someone's going to email you and go, well, oh, I don't know about that, any guy, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. my parents are telling me this. Well, I don't know. Some parents are a little more conservative, but I don't think anyone's doing a traditional, the, the definition of what a arranged marriage is. I don't so, think that's as common anymore. In my mind, you're saying like the actual hardcore tradition, this is what we're due, is gone, mm-hmm. but the the after effects There's are aftermath still lingering. Well, lingering, yeah. Ma- around, matchmaking yeah. is still common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now there are apps for for in, like they're Indian only apps or whatever for dating. Which what is that? that? Yeah, it's right. called it's called Dill Mill. Dill Mill. Dill Mill, like dill pickle, like dill mill. Oh. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> kind of like innuendo ish. Hey, I you got want your my dill? dill? I got your mill. <laughs> hey, yeah, put my dill in your mill, hey. baby. <laughs> <laughs> my mom doesn't like Italians. Run, run. Oh, my mom doesn't God. like Italians. I'm gonna be on Dill Mill by hey. the morning. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I met him on Dill Mill, Ma. He's not Italian. He's Indian. He's Aladdin. <laughs> Where's his sword? You went, you went from Jimmy Whispers to Aladdin. Hey, hey, I'm looking. I'm looking for my next Slum Dog Thousandaire over here. What are you? What are oh you gonna God. do? Do you know how many Indian male comedians in 2008 started using Slum Dog Thousandaire or Slum oh, Dog No geez. Air? That became everybody's hand. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, Slum Dog Food Stamper. Food Stamper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was that era of like Aziz and Slumdog. So of course. There were like so many more brown people coming to open mics. I found it hilarious. So on behalf of all Indian people throughout the world, throughout the uh, world. Speak, speak, speak for, for uh, speak for that, that, that guy that just got busted out for lying about his jokes. Oh, Hassan. Oh, Hassan. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Minna. Give your definitive, un, un, uh, unobjective <laughs> uh, truth on, on what all that was about. You know, his thing is particular because he wasn't just a... 
like he was obviously doing stand up, but if you watch those shows, those are like that's like performance art pieces. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. it's almost like a memoir. It's like someone doing like he was uh, on some high level. He was on some high level stuff. He he's in the intelligentsia. Like if you're getting like you know the Peabody Award or something. Sure, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna. I think mm-hmm. the reason he was you know fact checked a little bit more is because you're you're doing radio, TV correspondence dinners. You're working with journalists. Your your sure. Netflix show is you know getting again Peabody journal. That's a journalism award. People sure, were sure. treating a comedy show like a journalistic, you know, beacon mm. of hope. Maybe that's the issue that maybe these comedy shows shouldn't be treated. They're comedy first, not journalism. I mean, you, you remember what John Stewart said when they when he would battle Fox News and they'd say, "Are you a comedian or a journalist?" He's like, "No, I'm a comedian first. I happen to have a journalistic take, but I'm a comedian first. To me, it need, we need to go back to just being comedians. You know, like, well, sure. why are we holding <laughs> our comedians to higher standards than our politicians? Like, no, I, I will, know. I will. Well, to that, I will say, um, now, is he Rachel Dolezal? No. Uh, no, he's not Dolezal, no. But at the same time, like, the, what he was saying was insightful, right? He was making a point about, you know, his experiences as a Muslim-American man, which, by, by that, that's the other thing. That's a whole other, you know, what, of course. Mo- what Muslims dealt with in 9-11 is different than what I dealt with, you know, because my mm-hmm. family's not Muslim. My family's of Hindu faith. Now, certainly... Most average racists don't know the difference, you know. Like, right. So I'm still getting it, but I'm not getting it to a degree that someone like Hassan Minaj is getting. Is he going to embellish things? Sure. I mean, I I would say I think we all as comedians have embellished. Nothing in our jokes is exactly of truth. There's certainly no, absolutely. there are there are twists and turns that we make. There are certain things that we change around for the purpose of comedy. I don't. I, I know there's the one story where his child got anthrax and it turned out there was no anthrax mm-hmm. and the child didn't go to the hospital. Yeah, I mean, I can see you're gonna you're gonna embellish a story a little bit for comic effect, but I don't think he should have been held to this like you you lied. You're like again, he's not a journalist. Mm. He's not putting it out there now. Unfortunately, because of the company he keeps, maybe he's being treated differently because of that. Mm. And, you know, it certainly it affected him. I mean, uh, I believe Roy Wood Jr. said in the podcast that Hassan was next in line for the Daily Show. Mm. I believe that. Oh so yeah, it so definitely, he, he definitely, he got, he kind of got black or brown, but whatever you want to say, <laughs> brown, yeah, butterball yeah, yeah. turkey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's huh. unfortunate that he Gross. lost a big opportunity. You know, I, I, I do think he would have done a great job with the Daily Show, and I probably, <laughs> I'm saying that like, hey, uh, if you'd gotten that Daily Show, hire me, hey, yeah, help, help. I me mean, he definitely, he has the image. Uh, all of his teeth are straight, or, That's or whatever. Um, if you're ver- working for Viacom yeah. or any big entity, your teeth got to be straight. That's <laughs> important. Got to have coat, poofy hair. You know all that, all that good stuff. The, so the embellishment of a comic that's that's tradecraft. You, you, you those are the you, secrets. You, you yeah. have to do it. Sh- it shouldn't even be a secret. Like you yeah. basically have to do it. But I, and and all right. So the the my baby got anthrax. That's like right riding the edge. I think he had one part in there where it was like the rich. And I don't like when any anybody at all does this and okay. I, I can't think of any specific instance of any other ethnic group uh comic doing it at this moment but you give me enough time i'm sure i could sure. but was he saying something about like the girl he was dating their parents were this and that and and they were like racist against them and didn't like brown or well, it, there was yeah that was i the, think that was in the first special which yeah which as far as as far as a joke goes if you're aiming to be funny sure but with these I don't know days, if that was, yeah. 2020, whatever, th- these days, that is what somebody's going to go online, clip it, hashtag run it and get thousands of views on. Look, this is why this group is fucked up and do 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 and woo woo. And that. so if you're embellishing the hit, there's certain angles, I guess. Right. If you're putting gas on a certain angle. Yeah. That's when it's it's, it's almost weaponized. It's almost. He was trying to weaponize a certain way and then it got weaponized a different way. The, the gun. Yeah. Duck, it, what was that? Remember that? Yeah, cartoon? Yeah. Duck season, rabbit season. Well, yeah, the sign, the sign exactly. flips around a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Which so that th- part in the sh- show is very interesting because that's almost a dramatic. Like, again, that that first special of his mm-hmm. homecoming king. It's 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 a com- It's to me, it's not. Tip, it's not a stand-up special. Mm. It's a comedic performance art. Sure. It's almost like a one-man play. He's, yeah, he's a performer yeah. like that. I, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. like the I climactic, right. like, boom, oh man, like the pair, like I'm gonna go sweep right. off her feet, and like the, so it's like a dramatic, yeah, you know, thing. So to me, it's like, yeah, I guess maybe that's why it's being held to a different. Again, I don't know what the 
what people should be holding to a mm. standard or not. But I will say that because it's we're taking them on an emotional journey and people are like, no, this is your real experience. He's making it like a personal experience. Mm. I think that's where the frustration and the quote unquote outrage is coming from. Well, mm. you took us on this journey and then it turns out the family didn't care as much. Well, I, don't, I, I know he gave a response to that particular yeah, thing. Yeah, it was and he a said a very like, long response. A very long winded. It's uh, a very yeah. it's a very niche style of comedy. Yeah. I think um, Trevor Noah does that. A little bit of that no, W Kamal Brown or whatever. Oh, w Kamal does Bell, that. yeah, yeah. They do Man, that. So his if, show, if, I saw his original show at the yeah. hideout where it was, and it would it was something where like you, if you brought in a fr- if you brought if you if you brought a friend who didn't look like you, you got in free or something. There, he was doing a promotional. Okay, thing yeah. Then. Yeah, Dummy Kamal Bell's kind of like in that same vein of exactly. like, you know, PowerPoint, you know, there, it's more spoken mm. word. There's there's comedic slants to it, obviously. Sure. Punchlines. But he's telling stories, stories and he's showing the hypocrisy of, course, of culture yeah. and bit, yeah. racism and all that. And if he ever told a story about some white cop pulling him over and, yeah. and kick the shit out of him, yeah. and then you come to find out it's like fake, I think he would have gotten a certain level of backlash over exactly, that too. Yeah. Just because of... The statement he makes when he does his performance, I think, like you said, like it's you not said. it's not traditional stand up. Yeah. I don't know, Anthony. What do you think about uh, uh, Andrew Dice Clay? <laughs> <laughs> we were actually hey, funny. he was hickering <laughs> when he was dickering, and he should have been so dockering. Funny. Like, what so, was really in the bowl? It's yeah, so funny that you said that because the other day we were at this party and we were like, "What would Andrew Dice Clay be like in 2024?" <laughs> woke, you know, woke like Clay. What, what were uh, what were some of his like uh, like I needed the money. Hey, what was that? What's one? in the bowl? Uh, remember hey, that? Like, uh, hey, I need. And then said, I needed the money. I started to go fund me. Hey, hey, hey. hey. You, got, you got to smoke it like this. Hey, hey. What was the other? What was his famous jokes? Oh, okay. Jack and Joe went up a hill. What was the punchline? <laughs> What's in? The, no, it was, it was something misogynistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something, What's in the bowl, you? <laughs> Pretty hey, independent. What do you woman? identify as? Hey, it doesn't <laughs> matter. This bathroom's for yeah, everybody. Hey, binary, yo, binary queen. Wait, no, love everybody. <laughs> Nobody shaming here. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay, twenty twenty four. That's in the bowl. <laughs> you independent person who is full of dreams and hope, and I will not judge your background you or your body style. Hey. 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 I'm over here. Hey. Dude, I, 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 well, I think and then like, instead of a cigarette, it's a vape pen. Vape pen, yes. Hey. Oh, I'm it's getting popcorn vapor. lung over here. Hey. Make sure this isn't a real oh. vape. Make sure you get it from a dispensary so it doesn't explode in your face. <laughs> Educate yourself on the effects of CO2 in hey, your life. Hey, my turpins are hurting. Hey, yo. Always exude the edible. It's much safer and healthier. Yeah. I am a healthy version of Andrew Dice Clay. Well, seriously, guys, this is K2. I don't know. <laughs> well, you guys were talking about Hassan, but I'm way more offended by the guy who continues to get booked. And lied that he was in 9/11 and like had a very oh. speci- very specific story about in being in the tower mm. and the fear he had. Steve. That is so worse. Steve mm. ran as easy yes. from the uh, from that FX show. The lead. Oh, yeah. nobody I did not seems hear to about that. Everybody seems to forget that, but not 9/11. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? We've got stolen valor in comedy. Stolen, yeah. Dude, oh, there's yeah. there's been at least five comics in the history of my time in Chicago comedy who have lied about having cancer. And then this guy who's lied that he's in 9 11. I mean, we are so desperate. We're so desperate for attention. I was, for attention. I was, like, I was never loved. Uh, I was in the first tower. Uh, Not really. It was my uh, my fort that I built. Oh my god! I believe I, there was a there's a clip on Opie and Anthony of uh, Pete Davidson confronting Steve Randazzi. Hey, yeah, hey, my no died, my dad died in that fire. You, know, you <laughs> piece of shit. Uh, I made it up. And it's along those lines. Like, Whoops. you know, my dad died for your lie or something. Oh, I cannot wait for an eight mile open mic. Ooh. This guy's a comic. His real name's Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do got a dumb friend named Jetta Bob who says he was in Tower One. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff Field doesn't burn steel. <laughs> oh my and George God. Bush did fuck my girl. <laughs> Saying fuck Zaynees. Not, not really, guys. I mean, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to do a showcase. I don't know. I do miss. I, I miss that era of and every generation is going to say it for the generation before but yeah. I do miss I do miss unapologetic mean slanted hurtful painful all the words you're not allowed to say anymore comedy to an extent 
and it might just be nostalgic because of the age I was when that was happening, and it represents more than just necessarily the jokes, because there's not a lot of those that I'll go back and maybe they hold up now. But oh, they're still there. Did you see Andrew Dice Clay had a special that he did, and he brought on all his friends who are now like the modern day Dice Clays. Mm. It's <laughs> It's like pain. there's a market. It's for like it painful to watch oh, some yeah, of these yeah. comics as they come up there and they're just it's just gratuitous. Yeah. I don't know that I miss yeah. that so much as I miss mm. not losing your life for doing that. Like yeah. we we shouldn't be witch hunting humans. Especially when you're trial life. and erroring mm. especially like how else are you going to try jokes There are so many bigger works. things that yeah. they worry about in the world than like what someone said. Again, why aren't we mm. holding our leaders and our politicians to that standard? Why are comedians being like, you know, I, I literally had a woman come up to me in Amsterdam at a bar, <laughs> smoking hot. She was like six foot two. Yeah, yeah. Comes up to me, beautiful. I saw her as soon as I walked in. She walks up to me. I'm like, is, is this really happening? And she comes up to me. She leans down and she kisses me right on the lips. Mm -hmm. And she goes, in an accent, go, go grow, and we can do some more. And she pats me on the head and walks. Starts walking away. <laughs> That's. I knew she spoke Spanish. So yeah. I was like, hey, excuse me. She turns around and I go, como se dice en español, uh, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, I don't speak Spanish. I go, yeah, you do. And you know exactly what I just said. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, how is she not getting canceled? How are people who are mm. saying awful things like that? Like, like if I can forget about that, mm. I mean. I don't know. Maybe well, I'm it used to it. be. So it used to be right before um, before phones and in social connectivity. Right. You used to have to be on the top of the food chain of whatever your social group was in order to have a voice and opinion that even got picked up from high school. And that's anybody back when the word nerd actually meant a bad person because mm. they weren't inventing fucking Facebook at the time yet. You there was still a hierarchy of the top nerd. There was a hierarchy of the cool girl, the mean girl, the funny guy, the fucking jock, burnouts, the whatever. whatever any the burnouts, whatever. Yeah. And then the top one of that group was the one that had the voice, and they were the ones that got made into a movie, Breakfast Club, whatever the fuck, right? It was an archetype. But now the people who didn't ever have to navigate that social setting to make it to the top, all of them have a voice. If For, for the people who complain about... Too many males in Marvel comic book movies. They have a voice now. They have a voice now. And here's the thing. The reason why all of them are fucking tanking and Disney stock is down like 60% <laughs> is because they complain about not enough whatever in these movies. And then they don't go support the, the movie because they don't up. like that shit to begin like with. The WNBA. They like <laughs> complaining. And they're allowed to do it now because back when, you know, I, my old ass was in school, they didn't have a voice. So they were complaining in their head. They didn't have a way to get it out because nobody was listening to mm -hmm. them. Well, that's, that's the worst part about comedy, right? It's like nobody really cares about what you and I say every night of the week for 10 years. Mm. It's when we become on Chappelle's level that people suddenly yeah. start listening. It's crabs in a bucket. And criticizing. You're at the top. Yeah, yeah, it's crabs in a bucket. Too, You're yeah. at the top and they want to pull you back down. Mm -hmm. They don't care at all the suffering and all the schlepping through terrible mm -hmm. open mics and ter terrible shows where you've been literally in like attacked in Indiana like mm -hmm. or been in a fight mm -hmm. and you know and nobody cares about that it's oh he said the wrong thing about this yeah. topic no, more, more people want to see you come down yeah of more, course. meanwhile this person's mm -hmm. probably awful in every regard <laughs> if their kid is probably in a in a in a in a in a in a crib upstairs crying and you're on fighting on Google he's been know. coming in six in the Olympic bike <laughs> race his whole life yeah. here's the thing though every show you've ever done with an audience right th they come out it's the person that came out to not laugh yeah to just sit there and look at you with folded with arms ether well. in their did eyes you see my facebook post about last night mm -mm. we did the comedy bar last night it was like not that many people there which is normal for a tuesday yeah it's like 20 people and there's this family, and they just have this, like, snark. <laughs> like, I went around to every table, which I always do because yeah. I'm hosting, and they just had, like, a snark. And I finally just look at the dad. I go, why do you look like you teach poetry <laughs> at a college, <laughs> the university, and you, this is just too sophomoric for you? Everybody laughed except for that. No of one course. at the table. Yeah. All night, comics are like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Why, why are you so uptight? I actually asked the guy. I go, where are you from? He goes, Homer Glenn. 
<laughs> I was like, Homer Glenn. Okay, so at the end of the show, he comes up to me and he goes, Anthony, where in New Jersey are you from? And I was like, just outside of New York City, in Mawa and Bergen County. He goes, I, I grew up in New Jersey. I go, so not Homer Glenn? He goes, no, I made that up. I go, you made it up? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I, I don't want to be outed as from Jersey. I said, well, I'm from Jersey, and I told you. Yeah. And he goes, you know, Jack Nicholson, big Jersey guy. You see him all the time in Belmar. And I go, and Springsteen. He goes, no, you never see Springsteen anywhere. I go, my sister met him twice, the Stone Pony. He goes, you know, we came out here because we had a, and he does air quotes, funeral. We came here to cheer up. And I go, well, I hope you did. Yeah. And he just leaves in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> and they got in an elevator, and they all stared at me like it was the end of succession. Like, <laughs> cue up the piano. Yeah. Yeah. And the doors just closed. They were all like, I'm like, what just happened? Like the end of every episode <laughs> of Sopranos. Just, yeah. You just made up that you were from Homer Glenn. <laughs> they all were on board with it. You didn't laugh yeah. the whole show, and then you came after a funeral. Hey guys, let's uh, you know, we just yeah. bur- we just buried your uncle Ricky. Let's go. Let's up go. Let's go. Like, I, I know. I know. It's a pizza. I know it's my job to make you laugh, but you should also be a willing participant. Yes. You came here of your own volition. That's what I yeah, say. We didn't to force everybody. you to. No, I say no, that no. to everybody now when I host. I'm like, you are part of this. You're not zoning out. You're not watching TV. You have got to move your mouth you know yeah. don't look like you had a stroke i, I was just I, I think i meant i just went and saw uh john Milady at the den theater and I, I i'm watching and i see this guy he's sitting i mean this is the the front row seating and he's sitting on the the tail end of the horseshoe for the stage right stage right and during the two openers who were decent pr- actually pretty damn decent and he's sitting there arms folded across his chest He's with his old lady. His old lady's dying laughing at the part you're supposed to be laughing oh, yeah. at. And he's just sitting there like, dance monkey. That's not good <laughs> enough. Do backflips. John Mulaney gets on stage, which he paid a decent amount to have the tickets that he had. And, yeah, he starts laughing. But at this this professional who's been doing it for, what, 20-some-odd years? At, like, his hardest core bits, this guy's giving a chuckle. And it's like, bro, why the fuck? Even if your wife begged you to come out, say no. Go with Pam from across the street. I don't like laughing. Yeah. It bugs me. Watch it on Netflix when yeah. it comes out later. I want to sit here and look at my participation badge when I came in eighth place at the fucking bike race back in 96. People are too spoiled. I've long said we should have an interview process like a driver's mm. license to, to, get, to get a comedy yeah. show ticket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like You have to go in and be like, okay, let me ask you three questions here. Yeah. Tell me if you find any of these things offensive. One, two, three. If you answer yes, then you're, you're, not, you're not yeah. getting in. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story about how, uh, you yeah. know, my uncle uh, molested my cousin and they found the gun in the basement. If you, f- if you don't think this is funny, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do they laugh? Do they laugh at that? Yeah. No? Okay. I'm sorry, but you're not actually right, going to get Real, real the quick, roster. before I let you in, <laughs> goonie goo goo. Uh, you, you didn't, you <laughs> didn't laugh gonna, at all. You didn't, all right, you didn't make the not, cut. You're not allowed in that, here. That's a good uh, deep Chicago, <laughs> at, at least in Chicago, because they're so spoiled here. There you go. They can literally go anywhere. And now they're mm. spoiled. I'm I am noticing because I'm doing more shows in like mm. you know smaller towns. Like they're just they're happy for oh my god. Of course, they're excited. Yeah, of course. That it's not just a donkey that's roaming through the town. Like, when yeah, you yeah, have yeah. entertainment yeah. options, you get you get uh, spoiled. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we should be going through it because this is a city for Chicago. Like when you watch, it, well, it's part of the work ethic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be. And there's competition out here. Mm-hmm. There's some uh, there's some fucking murderers. Mm-hmm. Not even some a, d- a decent amount. Do you know how many times? Because I think I think of how small our office is as far as comedy goes and then uh, sure as shit i didn't know who john mulaney really was outside of you know face recognition i didn't know who he was till my girl told me about him like last year and she's like that's my favorite guy and then i'm watching this i'm like oh yeah he's hella funny Mm -hmm. or when you just see a headliner somewhere and you're like how the fuck wait you're from like the city too like you're Mm -hmm. from chicago where the hell have you been i've been in la it's like oh okay but you know work yeah yeah but I mean, being in Chicago or starting your career or being a part of this scene and 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 some other you know uh, uh, scenes as well, it's it's that it's Vegeta in the the capsule at like two hundred percent Earth gravity mm. training, and then you come out and you go to f- Dubuque. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Scott back. <laughs> Hi, <Hi-V>, baby. <laughs> I called it HIV because I got chicken uh, that was bad there. I go, you guys got me sick with your HIV chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty, you dirty, you dirty, dirty chicken. Dubuque Buyers Club uh, chicken. <laughs> manager's special. <laughs> Your Oscar winning horrible disease chicken. <laughs> that was my bad. I should not have eaten that chicken. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's terrible. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, 
do you have uh do you have do you make like a list of clubs that you want to hit is there a a club out there that you're like man like that's the one i want to do i'm uh, i think as far as the midwest i think like the kind of the coveted one is like acne in uh, mm. Minnesota, but I think I might actually be doing that, but I'm not sure when. There's like some. I like the subtle flex. There, well, there's like a uh, this show that you have to like kind of go through to get like into mm. their roster, but and I don't even know if that actually is how you get into their roster. Mm. I just know that that's how like the only way that I know from being from who I've talked to to get on. Mm. And I met the guy, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll put you on the list." So I'm on the list, but I have no idea when it is. <laughs> but at least it's like a path, you know what I mean? Mm. But. Kind well, for both of you, for, of for both game. of you, uh, to our new in the game comedy listeners, please give both your perspectives, especially you coming from another city, uh, but also knowing how to navigate Chicago. Uh, what gets you booked on shows? Is it being funny? Is it sending emails? Is it being in the green room, having conversations with people? Is it nepotism? Is it like what what w on the pie chart? Because you need a little bit of uh, of everything, I would think. But if you could break down the pie chart, what would you guys say it is? I mean, definitely talent is important. Work ethic is important. Being being visible, I yeah. think that's important mm. too. If you like me, who's like kind of like back and forth right now, I think it is important to go to shows sometimes and just let people know, hey, I'm here. And I've had opportunities mm. where I've ran into comics like, oh, I didn't know you were in town for a bit. Hey, you know, send me your avail. So like, it's that thing yeah. of being, being around. You know, if you're, if you're complaining about not getting booked at XYZ Club, but how often are you going in? And I'm not saying, like, go there and hang out from, like, 6 a.m. Mm. to 10 a.m. Like, no. Hey, well, that'd be odd because who, what club is open at 6 a.m.? That's a whole other thing but yeah the club like, i want to go unless you're, <laughs> unless you're naked and homeless yeah, and break in. yeah don't break in hey merle hey, hey turn up your volume you're gonna want to hear this, this one, one. <laughs> no I, th I think talent talent and the business it's that balance of art and commerce you have to be you have to be able to send an email too like you have to build a word and, you, and now do you really have to even word emails you can just write in chat gpt and you have mm. an email spit out for you <laughs> it's almost easier yeah. now to to send out emails than ever before Mm. But I think it's that balance of talent versus the business side, being cordial, saying hello, making eye contact with people, you know, not just going to a show and sitting in your corner. Yeah. Doing on your phone. Yeah. Well, the question was, what's the pie chart of how to yeah. get booked? What, what do you, uh, Are you looking pri at prioritize, or, yeah. prioritize? So you're you're a new you're a new open micer. Right. And I actually get this question a decent amount from from newer comics. You're in your first, second year. You want to get booked on Zanies. But you're Anthony Bonazzo, the man, the myth, the legend that you are now. <laughs> what advice are you giving to your you to get into Zane? Outside of your horse shit, um, I just walked out of Second City and they were like, <laughs> wait, are you are you the conservatory <laughs> guy? Come on, get you, on the show. You zip zap zap. <laughs> I, I give myself the same advice is to stop trying to get booked and mm. wait for people to book you. Mm. So, like, yeah, I still send out emails, but I'm not harassing people. I'm no. not sending yeah, out 100 emails a day no. or a week even. It's maybe monthly, and I'm checking in, but I'm getting a lot of texts. I'm getting a lot of emails. I'm getting a lot of Facebook messages. And, like, mm. that is where you know you've sort of hit the groove. And I was, like, in the beginning, I was, like, trying to do all these shows, and there's just certain shows you shouldn't even be trying to do. Like, sure. you know, like you, sh you got to chill a little bit with the stage time and stop acting entitled because what you think you're probably ready for, you're not. Mm. And it's going to take reps. So, yeah, sometimes it is good to do those gigs so that you get kind of thrown to the dogs. If you're working on new jokes or something, yeah, take those gigs. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But there's so many opportunities yeah. to, to, exactly. to like refine. Like Nola is a great open mic where you can go and then she's like, <laughs> how long do you want to do? And I can go up with like 15 minutes of new stuff yeah, yeah, and yeah. work on that. I can go to an improv show and open for them for free but in, in, on Monday and do... 25 minutes of new stuff with my notebook and you know mm -hmm. you can go to you can go to open mics which are good but like but prioritize we all, we, we all know yeah, what yeah. open mics are exactly. worth your time and 90% exactly. of them are not so mm -hmm. it's like find the ones where it's not just all the people who are from like you know a show you want to do sitting in the back judging and not laughing but like go to like a, a variety room like the one tonight is great at Emerald City that you know uh, they do there. That's a great Ethan's, mm. you know, Ethan's that's a fun room, room cause that's it always gets an audience. Mm. Go to the South side, expand yes, yourself. Yes. Think about like a workout. Like don't just do one chest muscle. press exactly. and pull-ups yeah. every day. Go to like, 
go to a Mikey O show, go to a Latin yeah, yeah. show, <laughs> go to, you know, whatever, go uh, to a black room that you've never thought you'd ever drive it's that It's such far a diverse south. city and we have so many diverse audiences. Yeah, yeah, stretch yeah, yeah. You can learn what jokes work in different rooms. Exactly, but do, right. do everything. Yeah. Become like the pioneer, like do TikTok videos, do Instagram reels, post memes, make jokes, take an acting class, take a voice Start lessons, a learn how to sing, yeah, yeah. do a podcast, <laughs> do, learn an instrument, learn another language. Like, like co the cool part is you... Be it enriches your material and it enriches your act and it makes you a better, more grounded person too because you're growing all the time. So it's not that you're just like getting booked. It's like, it's so it's like bigger than limiting. That. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger. <laughs> like you can become a better person and a more quality individual. And in the process, your business then grows because of the investment you've put into it and yourself. And that is priceless because you could just be sending out emails and complaining, but that gets you nowhere. Like get, get good. Mm -hmm. If you're so worried, like it goes back to the beginning of the conversation. If you are really truly committed to doing this and you really want to be the best and you want to be the funniest, I will never see you at the same open mics every week. Sure. I will never be see going. you because you'll either be working so much, mm -hmm. you'll be busy or you'll be plugged in all these different spots doing so many different things that no one's going to know what's going on. It's like you're behind the shadows mm. and you sort of have to become like a lone wolf. And nobody wants to be the lone wolf. Exactly. They like that support of the, the, the back of the room laughing at Can't your, trust that it. funny abortion yeah. joke about how you, you gave it to yourself, you know, or whatever <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah. joke that they made up about a story that they contrived that just kills at every room but never anywhere else and you have to be willing to and that's an ego check you got to be willing to mm -hmm. you got to be willing to eat shit you got to be willing to bomb in a room where nobody knows who you are that's why sure. i loved going to the south side because it's like <clears throat> you know you'll just go up there and you get humbled really fast like oh, yeah, black yeah, yeah. people don't mess <laughs> around especially no. when it comes to like a paid show like you can go to the jokes and notes open mic when all you want and kill for five minutes when you go back on a weekend where it's a 25 dollar <laughs> ticket and right. the two drink minimum and they they're out and they're dressed mm. up to the nine and they're on their date night and their kids have got to sit her and you know, you're there. There's no, there's no, there's no silent dissension there's either. No, there's, mm. Yeah. There's no, no, there's no funny or it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and then and it, it, I can, say I can no. feel that I'm already behind the eight ball going up as like, are you your feature act? Uh, I remember yeah, Marvin yeah. Phipps was like, he's not a brother, but he's a brother and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, I'd come yeah. up and for the first 30 seconds, like who the fuck is it? I don't want to Hey, don't worry. I'm Italian. I grab my balls too. Hey, yo. But you got to get out of here. He's Italian. Hey. <laughs> Jackie Galetta's mom is in the back. Get the hell out of here! You don't, you don't like Italians. I said, "What kind of pepper is pepperoni?" <laughs> yeah, am I, I right? I actually got brought up by, by that. Like, I was like, I was like, I was. Like, that's one of my my new jokes is like short kings. It's like uh -huh. you're putting a positive spin on it, but that insinuates it's there's something bad about being short. It doesn't work when I'm like, hey, guys, meet my girl over here. It's my fat queen. Come on out here, honey. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like, so it's like short people and Italians. Like, mm. I always like was joking, like Germans like, were okay with the accent because of what they did. And, you know, Russians, you know, like Russians, Russians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you, you shan't do an Asian accent. Don't do an Indian accent. But then I did a, a show. A I did a show, and they go, are you guys ready for the next comedian? He's going to make it a pizza of the pie. Give it up a go. Oh, hey. And he started like literally throwing fake improv <laughs> dough, and I'm like, I was like, I didn't even know what the hell to do. Yeah. I was like, do I come out as Luigi? Like, hey. yeah. like if if you can't take a joke as a culture, I, I don't, I don't, oh I'm God. not gonna eat your food anymore. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I before we get out of here, I had actually just remembered, and I want to get your guys take on it. I hope you've seen it, but if you can't, I I just saw a video. It's the Skink Fest guy, so it's like. Dan Soder, um, Big J, uh, Jay Ogerson, and all those guys, yeah. and 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 their like their atmosphere, their group, and I want to say it was like four or five of them. They had AI listen to however much of their act, then it synthesized their voice and did one solid minute of material for of each for all for each one of them. Blew my mind. Well, so you're listening to them and they're absorbing it the, the same time, you know, in the video or whatever. I might send it to you guys because I really want your feedback on it. Um, it's profound, bro. Mm. Like it's. Well, I'm, that's like that George there. Carlin thing that they brought back George Carlin. They were all, mm. the family was suing them. Did you see that? Right, the daughter did not. Yeah, they so brought, Kelly Carlin, who's his daughter. They basically, basically brought George Carlin back and he did like an act. He's like, I'm sorry, it took so long. And he came out yeah. and like did like an act, like he just came back. It, it, was it, it was it got it was creepy, but it wasn't as it no, didn't have the no. nuance. Here's here's what here's one of the things. It's kind of small that blew my and it's it does it's not up to the nuance no. yet. But it was Cadence voice 
Um, and then th- even they at towards the end, they were like, oh, my God, like that's an actual joke. Like there was a couple of actual jokes. Mm-hmm. Here's what blew my mind. And sure. I, I've noticed, uh, you know, I used to, always been a hip hop fan and I would listen to especially you listen to like Bone Thugs and Harmony or Crucial Conflict or like, you know, who had Tretch and. I would listen to them like when you're listening to Twister's old CDs or whatever, like off Kamikaze or Do or Die. I would listen to their breasts because I'm like, man, that's amazing that they have to do it real quick. (gasps) And then they're spitting out two bars, triple time and all this other good shit. Right. Then, I mean, over the course of the last 10, 15 years, like the a lot of hip hop cats, they just do the punch in where they literally go in there. Wayne started. Well, Wayne was one of the pioneers. He just goes in there and spits like a bar, maybe a bar and a half, two bars. And the editor, the engineer is just sitting there cutting it, clipping it and throwing it together. And I noticed you don't hear the breath anymore because it's it's honestly it's just one line after another that's Mm. getting Frankenstein together by an engineer. And I was listening for that for AI, too, because I was like, look, when Terminator Day happens, when Skynet comes online, <laughs> I'll be able to tell because they won't You'll be breathing. you get their breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And for, for a while, that AI synthesized voice wasn't doing it. It was breathe. Do, do you understand? Like, I don't know if there was an AI whatever guy sitting there punching in, like, don't forget to breathe. Or if AI figured it out, like, ah, if I had lungs, which I don't, <laughs> I would be breathing right now so that I could say this amount of words. And I'm like, oh, shit, we're in a lot of fucking trouble. Or maybe those guys just wheeze and breathe a lot. Less. And it just... <laughs> They're and picking up the breath. And it's, it's just an AI it. with emphysema. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so I take it you guys didn't fa- see it? No. I didn't see that, but I, I I listened to a little bit of the Carlin thing. I'm I'm I've been reading a lot about how like TV like sitcom yeah. scripts are being generated through Chat GPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people are saying, like comedy is being taken by this. This AI could be like shit. a great sitcom idea where the, <laughs> the AI, AI version of the comic gets <laughs> yeah. booked, and the uh. original comedian gets jealous. He's like, my AI is getting all this work. Oh, how'd God. you get it? How'd you get that? Uh. He's messaging the AI computer. How'd you get that spot? I don't know, man. Hard oh, work. Yeah. You just got to work keep hard. showing yeah. up. Got to do the conservatory. <laughs> uh. You got to do the AI Don't be Italian either. That yeah, don't yeah. help. But then three years in, you got to make uh, AI like the prima donna douchebag. <laughs> yeah. like, wait, how, AI how are you, conservatory. AI. How, how, are you, how are you late? You're omnipresent. Yeah, I don't know. I was just fucking this whatever. <laughs> Why are you doing that with your synthesized voice? Like, you, did you smoke too Bored. many imaginary cigarettes? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, just kind of tired or whatever. Like, I, I tried this vape pen. Hey, what was your name again? Huh? It was a USB drive. Hey. Yeah. Hey, wait. Andrew Dice Clay recommended did a vape you, pen, so I you, tried it. Did you just make a, a video image of finger guns? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, you right now? You do the right one. You hey, do this hey, one instead hey, of this. You hey, gotta, blah, 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 blah. You blah. generate your image to do hey. this. I didn't tell you to be Italian. <laughs> There's a pinched finger on the screen. What's <laughs> Do you prefer Morgan Freeman? No, I don't. Stop doing that. You know that gets on my nerves. <laughs> and then AI gets canceled for, for generating the wrong. I thing. cannot AI, wait for AI to get canceled. AI went on tour. Oh my and, god! And then got canceled. <laughs> and then the original comedian, the comedian takes gets over. The takes and over. Hey, and he I'm got back. canceled. I redeemed hey, myself. Hey, hey, do, do me a favor, AI. Draw, draw me an Asian uh, <laughs> uh, character. Ooh, look at those <laughs> eyes. Somebody, take a look at this. Take a look at this. Hey, I'm not gonna say it, but he's pretty good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind, do me a favor. We have come to the end of the Real Rap Podcast, but uh, tell the folks uh, how they can find you on your socials. Anything that you got coming up that you want to pump out there, man, or anything exci- uh, you know d- down the line uh, that you want to promote? Please get it out. You want to go first? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, at Prathi Comedy on Instagram and Facebook and all that TikTok. Uh, and I'll spell my first name, P R A. T E E K. Uh, yeah, you can find all my shows on Instagram. Uh, oh, I'm also part of. Uh, I'm helping out with the Bye Bye Liver sketch show. That's every Friday, 10 p.m. at the Newport Theater in Chicago. So I'll be in town for a little bit this next month nice. or two. Yeah, Good just enough. comedian trainer. One word on everything: TikTok, Instagram. I'm not even on Twitter anymore. Mm. And uh, X. It's Zany's in Old Town, in the middle of a- middle to end of April, and uh, that's the only thing I think I got coming up. Really, I don't. I'm moving, so I'm like I'm not taking <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of bookings for March. Yeah, so. Help follow, move. follow, follow these these funny fellas um, on all the socials. Um, I am Mike Knight Comedy on all the things. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, man. Um, pumping out 
content like nobody's business. Uh, can't wait to have these guys back. Uh, and check down on the wherever wherever the things are gonna be at. <laughs> Click on one of the things. One of the things. Um, right and here, then keep, right keep the tagging. AI hey, you know hey, where you can hey, click hey, at hey, it. Click on like hey, 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 what's hey, on the subscriber hey, list? It's hey, an Italian AI. Hey, 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 oh Timmy two screens. Hey, 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 it's been a real rap podcast. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make that right away. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>